RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation, is a technology that's used for large language models that really solves two primary issues that you run into with, with large language models. The first is just citations. How do you know where this information is necessarily coming from? You're augmenting the LLM beyond just what's in its foundation memory with data, data from your business, data from something that it is going to now make use of. So it will let you know where in that data it actually found something that was useful. Secondarily, it gives it access to very current and relevant information. They don't just update the foundation models every month or even every week. They're more like every six months or so, um, up to maybe even nine months, that they update that foundation model, the actual weights of the neural network. So if you can augment it with additional data, this lets you as a company or, or you as something that has proprietary information that you would like for the models to make use of. So we're going to look at some code examples here where I introduce you to RAG. We're going to look at summarizing multiple PDFs. But before we jump into that, let me really explain kind of what, how RAG actually works. So you have a foundation model. And the foundation model knows certain things, but it doesn't know anything that is proprietary that you might want to additionally add into it. All that the large language model has is its prompt. The prompt is what you give it. It's the question. It can be quite long. You could say, proofread this document for me, and then write the rest of the prompt is, is the document that you wanted to, to proofread. When you have chat sessions with it, where you're going back and forth, and you'll tell it, I had a really nice weekend this weekend. I went kayaking. And then it'll ask you something about that and it'll remember the flow of this conversation. Well, that's all being built into that prompt. You're, you're putting just pairs of that, that chat conversation or summaries of the chat conversation and that gets built into it. The next thing that we're gonna see that we can build into these prompts beyond memories is basically giving it a lookup. So what it will do is it will take a large, large document, not, not necessarily hugely large, but something that is probably bigger than what would fit into the window, the context window that the large language model has, and it will basically chunk it. And these chunks become very important. You could look at maybe each page of a book as, as a chunk but that might not be ideal because they would, each, each page would, I mean, maybe the idea that you want is right at the end of one page and goes on to the next page. So what you do there is you have an overlapping factor. So maybe you start with the first page and that's the first chunk, but then you read one paragraph, you skip the first paragraph of that page and then you get the next paragraph of the next page and you have the sliding window that basically goes across the entire document. Chunking strategies can get complex. Maybe you don't want it straddling chapters. Maybe you're at the end of the chapter. Okay, that's it. Don't straddle half of chapter one and half of chapter two, maybe something like that. That becomes very important sometimes in legal documents when you're having it search across uh, court proceedings and, and other things like that. But then it has an index or a lookup for each of these chunks that you've now created. And it takes your prompt. It calculates what's called an embedding. This is a vector that describes your paragraph in a way that's, that's searchable. And then it looks at the same vectors for all of those chunks that are created, and whichever two are the closest. And there's some thresholding. So it'll, it'll grab everything that's within some threshold of closeness. And that gets loaded into the prompt as reference data for the the prompt to, to or for the LLM to help answer the question that you posed in the prompt. Or in this case, we're going to do summaries. So what we're going to do here is just like all the other examples that we have in this course, we are going to load the API key. Now this API key is for OpenAI. We're using Langchain. So if you want to use something other than OpenAI, you're just going to have to modify the driver part of this uh, and and you should be able to use something, something else. The key is stored here. You'll want to put your 
OpenAI key there. This class does focus primarily upon OpenAI. And this is all the Langchain and other stuff that we're loading into here. So there's really three phases that you go through when you do this, the retrieval phase. This is where you, you do what I said before, you go across all those chunks, you find the ones that are the closest. Augmentation phase, now you augment the prompt with this. You probably tell it at the front, here's some reference information that will help you to answer this question. And usually you tell it to take the reference information over and above what it already knows as a foundation model because what's what you're giving it here is probably newer than what it had in the foundation model. And that's another important point too. If the company data that you're giving it is already in the foundation model, it already knows that. Maybe like with underwriters in the life insurance industry, maybe you have a nice curated set of medical articles that you would like them to utilize when they're underwriting. The large language model already knows that. That's not going to help it. What it needs is specific custom information about how your company underwrites, not just a bunch of articles that it already knew about that you might be giving to your underwriters. That's very useful for humans, not so useful for the large language model. So then the generation phase, it gets the prompt, it ha it's been augmented, and now it generates something based on the RAG information. So let's look at an example here. We're gonna use gpt 4 Mini, just like we do in, in a lot of these. I don't doubt that in the future, this will be a later version, is I will update the notebooks. I may not update the videos until the changes are material enough that it's more than just, just getting the latest version. You always wanna use the latest version of these because usually it's less expensive. Not always, but you'll wanna balance that. And these are some articles that I have from archive. So these are scientific journal type, type of things. Let's have a look at what one of these is just so you can, you can see this is just your typical article academic paper. This is a very pivotal one. Attention is all you need. But there's several of these all related to generative AI that I put in here. So it's going to load all four of these, all, yeah, all four. And then we're going to pose it questions about that, or in this case, we're going to summarize it. So you can see you run it here. It loads these all from the Pi PDF loader and loads, loads all of them in. And then we're going to create the embeddings model. Now we're not specifying the embeddings model that we want. There's several, but this just uses the default one for OpenAI. And we are going to create the vectors index. So this is chunking it up and basically generating a, an embedding or a vector that's going to help it to look all of those up. So now I'm going to ask it a question, which figures demonstrate scalable dot product attention? Okay, just posing that to the, the general sort of um, large language model, foundation model, this would not do any figure two of what? It wouldn't really, it re wouldn't really know or which figure. So it's familiar with these, these documents. So it tells us in the documents figure two. And then I do talk about some of the limitations of, of RAG. You certainly have to be aware of um, just does, does the foundation model already, already know this? If it does, then you're not necessarily helping at all that much. You also need to be aware that, that RAG is fundamentally just augmenting it with additional information. You're not necessarily changing the tone of the large language model output. If you want to change the tone, typically you're going to need to fine tune and we'll talk about that later. You also need to be aware that all this data that you're throwing into it with RAG, you need it. You need to make sure that the user who is using your large language model also has access to see that type of data because you need to, you need to basically control the access from RAG to that data. And that's how you can impose some security in this kind of, uh, kind of a, a model. But RAG is one of the big technologies for large language models. This is probably one of the most cost effective ways that you can get your business data inside of the RAG model. 
unlike memory, like we saw in chat memory, this persists beyond, I mean, at, once you reestablish the RAG connection, it's going to still remember it, as opposed to the memory, like in the chatbot, that's going to be gone as soon as you start up a new session. So thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my additional entries on this course or other things that I cover on machine learning, deep learning, and now generative AI. Thank you for watching.